Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. I apologize for the slightly lower than normal voice. Uh, however, I am recording at night again. So, I have decided that I have to address the issue of getting to the sun, or getting into low solar orbit, I should say. For those of you who have been watching my previous videos, I've been having a lot of trouble with that, and it's currently my main goal. So, I have got to work on it. And I've been thinking about what to do. Probably going to do that. Yeah, I forgot that item is pretty well broken entirely. So, I need a fuel tank as well. Perfect. And from here, I should be able to attach the oxygen cleaning system. Perfect. And finally, the engine we're using. This baby. As well as we need our satellite payload. I like it. I think this is going to be the upper stage that we will use to um to actually like burn around the sun. So let's take it out to the launch pad real quick and see uh, what we can see about it. Now, for those of you who are uh, blissfully unaware about plasma engines, because I've never don't think I've actually used them before. They run on both electricity and fuel. And they consume ridiculous amounts of electricity. Like you thought the ion engines I used before were bad? You haven't seen nothing yet. Boot up the ZO2. And there we go. Plasma engines firing. We all so that's what that is. That is a reactor capable of fueling the plasma. I forget what's the key for them. No, not Y is V. X. Uh, oh no, wait, X ends power. No, that's camera control. Alright, uh, whatever, we'll just do it manually. Since I can't remember whatever the heck the button is for that. Just make sure that our battery remains completely full. <clears throat> so the plasma engine's been burning for a while, and you've probably noticed that there is almost no fuel missing. And that's bound to be the case for a while. Oh, 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 hang on. It appears the command pod broke off. I think. Oh, yep, we broke off. <laughs> the satellite exploded. Woohoo! Flip, flop, flip, flop, flip. Oh, we got running for the fuel tanks. Gotta be careful. Oops. So, anyway. And there we go. I think that's the first indent in the fuel tank we've seen. We've left KSP. And onward in our great adventure! Seriously, what the hell? <laughs> this command pod is pretty trippy. Oh, no, oh, there we go. Spin. <laughs> now, I, 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 for some reason, don't think gyroscope should actually be capable of doing this. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. Oop, 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 oop. Oh, gyroscope's OP. <laughs> that is for sure. And I like how everyone's just kind of happy about it. I mean, I'm amazed considering they are, like, spiking in G-forces. <laughs> Let's head back to the launch pad. So anyway, the entire point of this test was more or less just to see how the, uh... thing, uh... what you call it? Hold, held up. Uh, the plasma engine. As you can see, we're barely burning any fuel. And so it appears, so long as we have the reactor functional, 
which it appears to remain so, uh, the plasma engine will be fueled. I tend to avoid using the reactor because it basically produces infinite energy. It too consumes a rather small amount of fuel though. So essentially I can turn fuel into oxygen as well. I think the reactor probably needs a bit of a nerf though. Alright, so yeah, that's how much fuel we've used in four minutes. I think that should be uh, more than sufficient, I believe. This is this rocket should be capable of solar orbit. It also has a thrust, I should point out, of 80, which is rather comparable or to the max thrust of 50 of the ion engine. It's slightly more powerful. <coughs> now, I'm not going to make the same mistakes I did last time. One mistake I definitely need to correct from my last... Oof, lag spike, lag spike, lag spike, ooh. My last one was the fact I had no SAS on the upper stage, <coughs> which gives me a rather nice set of controls. Also, I'm going to put in some RCS. And actually, since this could be such a long mission, triple up the RCS tanks. Let's move that. I think they have to be a certain distance, or this thing has to be a certain distance from that and that, so that should look about right. Also, what else here? Throw on the mech jab. Perfect. Alright. Hmm. Nah, it doesn't fit. Alright. Where's the RCS thruster block? There we go. For these, I'm gonna want a set of eight. I like it. I don't know why, I just put it in the middle. Probably actually a little more effective if I uh, stick it up here. Though it's kinda close to the oxygen filters that way. So let's put it here. Okay, so we got a nice RCS thruster block. And yeah, this is the upper stage that will do solar orbit. And hopefully not spin like a blasted centrifuge. Anyway, I think this is also the lightest stage that I've ever, upper stage I've ever built. Which is uh, rather important for the people who have seen my other launches. No, I'm not going to bother with that. I think I'm just going to do the uh, classic Tyrodines. Those have so far proven to serve me rather well in the past. So I have absolutely no reason not to assume that they will continue to serve me. Hmm. Alright, uh, let's think. So... Actually, I think I am going to go with a 3 meter liquid fuel stage. Just because it might end up uh, proving to be just a little bit better. Also, what I need are a bunch of decouplers now. I've completely forgotten to put any in. I'm going to need one right about here, I'd say. And I believe we will need another one. No, I don't want that one. Ugh. Here we go. The short decoupler. Perfect. It's a, this will be a rather short three meter stage, but I'm hoping it should be okay. I will put a matriarch on this. And up the ante to eight engines. Right, I have to move you out of the way. Don't know why it clips with ghost parts. It really shouldn't. So here's hoping that this gets me... Or... Plasma rocket. Or... Solar... Rocket. 
Okay then. Something else I've realized now that I've forgotten to include is, in fact, a parachute. No, I don't want that one. I want... no. No. The Mark III. Here we go. Boom and boom. Alright, so parachute stage zero. Check. Decouple the capsule, stage one. Stage two is the satellite. Stage three is the upper stage. That's decoupling the upper stage. Stage five is the matriarch. Stage six is detaching these. Stage seven is those themselves. All right, couple things before we uh, go off. Always add in a bunch of SAS for the first stage. And we're good. Oh, yeah, debris. <laughs> the, AKA the rest of the upper stage was kind of left on the pad after we decided to leave it. Whoop. Uh oh. Eh. Okay. Um, that's always fun. Structural failure before the decoupler and the 2 meter rocket engine, or 2 meter plasma rocket engine. Okay, <clears throat> that's great. I'm not sure which part is the cause of that, though. Like, is the plasma engine just completely incapable of holding the upper stage up? Because, I mean, that would be pretty freaking ridiculous if that was true. Hmm. Let's just use a different decoupler and see what we get. Because, I mean, it still isn't that heavy of an upper stage, I don't think. Well, let's see. Okay. Oh, no, it, it, it's cooked. No. Oop, only one person was killed in plummeting into the sea below the level. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure it's just the engine. So the engine can't bear any weight. That makes it rather tricky to include at all. Like I said, this, this pack is still rather glitchy. It's uh, from a pack I don't list because I don't really use its parts too much, and I'm probably still not going to list it because, as you can see, it's rather incredibly glitchy, and I don't recommend the pack. But if I can find a way to use it, it might save me a little work trying to get into low solar orbit. But we'll see. Uh, no. What? No, I wanted it to go out here. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect. But with any luck, that should give it structural support and actually allow it to uh, stay steady on the launch pad. But I suppose we will see. Oh, it's, hey, it's steady. The struts are making it connectable. Alright, we don't need orbital operations right now. Oh, great, so my smart ASS is somewhere off the screen, actually, isn't it? Because I've recently adjusted my resolution. Okay, it looks like we're going up without smart ASS. Hell, we're not even going to be able to use smart ASS at all. Great. <laughs> To my piloting skill, it seems. Oh, no, I see. Yes, it seems. Gotta bring it in. And hold her steady. Eh, I don't think I can do it. No. 
Alright, so apparently I need some winglets on the bottom of my rocket in order to control it properly. So, for fun, let's release the Scud missiles in 3, 2, 1, release! Oh, hey, wow, we actually survived that. Slightly more than expected. And hey, we can now actually control the rocket. Too bad we didn't get high enough. Let's ditch that. Let's activate the plasma engine. Oop. And apparently the satellite's gone. So the plasma engine totally works. Let's use the RCS. <laughs> yeah. So this thing's cooked. Abandoned ship, I believe the term is. And huzzah, hooray, etc. Everyone survives this one time. <laughs> My track record for Kerbal surviving these things is pretty bad. So, let's get some winglets. Since these things can't thrust gimbal, I need something to ensure I'm pointing upwards. It really helps. Rocket. Rocketry is rather uh, troubling when you're not pointing upwards. All right. <laughs> My standard triple conad design that I use on this seems to give it more than enough usually. So, somewhere I think between these episodes, I'm going to have to. Um, like, go and see if I can't uh, get my smart ASS back on the screen. Like, it's not appearing anywhere. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Alright. Must... Uh, Oh well, I don't know. And firing it up. In three, two, one, T for SAS first, just to make sure. And away we go. Oh god, yeah, okay. I'm in control of the other pieces of the rocket that aren't ASS, or SAS. Which means that I will have to ensure that we are piloting as much upward as possible. I'm trying my best to try and keep the rocket stable. Caps lock. I don't need it. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh god. Keep us above a pitch of 80 at least. Which I considered my goal, I guess. Oh jeez. The rocket fell apart. Eject everything, eject everything. Well, at least everyone survives again. That, that, that's always good. But the rocket sadly did not hold together. It was good. A, a good attempt. I will say that. Oh uh, boy. But I think that's it. I need to go adjust um, some resolution settings and try and see if I can't fix my mech jab. So, uh, until next time, I'm Galvin. If you enjoyed the video and watching me completely fail with a plasma rocket, I th feel there's potential here, but more experimentation is needed. And I might actually be able to use this in some way to... Uh, actually facilitate, you know, getting into a low solar orbit. But we'll see. We will see. Only time will tell. It's quite the challenge, and I have, haven't given up on landing on Minimus yet, but I've slowed down my attempts. Like, I haven't tried in the last couple days. I'm just going to come back to it after a while, probably. See if I can't do anything. God, all these parts are getting stuck under the level.
And there's my plain graveyard that you can see so nicely lined up with the runway. And ain't it great? Warp 1 and survival. So, coming from Kaelvin, uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. This is Kaelvin signing off.